I wanted to know what you guys thought of Nomadland, of course, since we've all seen it. And it's a front runner for the Best Picture Award at the Oscars, and it won Best Picture uh, Drama at the Golden Globes. If you want me to start with this, I... I'm very fascinated by like nomad culture in general. Like there was a point when I was Josh's roommate staying at his parents' house while sister was away that I bought a new car while I was there. But I kid you not, I looked at a van first and was like, this could be kind of cool. Just like drop out of society until uh, my wife comes back and do it. But I think that this film, this film tells like a really deep story. It talks about like, it's very sorrowful. It's, it's mourning. It is like almost a rebirth at times, but it also shows like a, a subculture of the U S that not a lot of us get to see. And a lot of us, if we do see it where we have a negative association with those people at times, we're like, Oh, those are bums. Those are people on the, on the fringes of society that we don't really want to hang out with. But it shows like a, like such a charitable, beautiful side of this in my opinion. But I also, uh, I don't know. I think the actress did great in it. Like, she led the film. I like the, whatever, uh, the supporting guy. I forget what his name is. He's in a lot of stuff. I thought he did really good. I thought some of the dialogue. Huh? Dave. David Strathern. Yeah. Dave. Like, and, like, one of my favorite lines was, like, hey, one of the, the tires on your van is, is down or something. Like, they're flat or something. And he's, like, oh, I hadn't noticed. And she's, like, yes, yeah, because you haven't been out there like, in a while. And I thought it was good, though. Good film. Yeah. There are a lot of films that I watch, and they can be very, like, moody in a way. And the story that they tell is very deep, but it's not very direct. And that's I feel like that can be a very good thing. And that's what I felt during this one. And a lot of those, I can be like, okay, that's okay. That's kind of how I felt with Minari, that it was just, it was a very, like, sort of ambient film. And you were just getting, like, the story of the American dream and everything told. And it was very, like, slow and just sort of beautiful and meant to, like, be, like, giving you feeling. And I did feel that, but not as much. And in this movie in Nomadland I felt like I was really being taken on this journey the journey of someone who has like lost someone close to them and is really living this life out of like out of necessity sort of but also out of like their feeling of not wanting to return to what that past life was because they feel that it won't be the same without their loved one right and so like it's a really like beautiful slow moving tell Francis McDormand as Fern is incredible like Oscar winning performance. I think she was incredible. And also Chloe Zhao, the director also did an amazing job creating this story, getting like real people and real places and just showing this culture that really actually exists in America and how beautiful, but also how sad it can be. It was just like a very moody, like it kept like my emotions flowing the whole time. That's the perfect way to say it for me. How beautiful yet, how sad it can be. I did not expect this movie to make me sad and I was depressed through the whole thing. I thought this movie would make me want to join the nomad culture, to abandon everything and live off the road, you know, live off of what you have and not be a slave to society and just like hit the road and enjoy your life. And this had the opposite effect on me. I felt so bad for these people who are, I mean, they made their choice. A lot of them want to, I mean, not necessarily want to live like that way, but love living that way. And they found a way to survive in their vans and, and do all those things I just said. But for me, I just, I, I watched it and I was just like, I don't, I'm, I'm a, I'm a preparer. Like I'm a worrier, um, to not have something to fall back on, to not have a savings account, to not have a home, to not have all these things that stresses me out more than anything I can think of. Like that's my worst fear. So watching these people in this lifestyle and these, <clears throat> these people who have like kind of been tossed to the side by society I thought that I'd come away with a new appreciation of like the way that they made it or the way that they present it in this. And I didn't, it made me more scared, you know, to, to not have that happen to me and to like really think of if, if I lose my job, what's my backup? Because I don't want to live on the side of the road in a van. It's kind of gritty in that way. Like where like, like, and it didn't necessarily deter me as much because like, I'm not, I'm not afraid. Like, like I, I have those fears. Right. But I'm like, okay, like I could do this for a time, 
but like there's like a cowboy from like Michigan, right? Like or somewhere up there in the north. There's like this old lady who's sick. Like I'm not trying to give too many spoilers, but there's just all these people who are going through different things during the story along with Fern, right? And it's hard to watch. But for me, it wasn't necessarily like deterring. It was a little bit of just kind of like, if I were to do this, how would I do it differently? Because mm-hmm. cause like, you can be a digital nomad and still be a low techer. And like, I've seen like people who are low techers on YouTube. Like there's this guy who I follow. He's a cheese maker. He is terrible at filming, but somehow his videos still got like 50 to 80,000 views. Like for what he's doing and he's terrible at filming but he has like 500,000 followers and I'm like this guy makes one cheese video a month and he probably makes like three to five grand a month off this like and I'm like okay I could do something at least See, and that's kind of what I expected was to like have some of these people who live on the road but are also making a living off of that like van culture and Instagram on Instagram feed and that kind of stuff or like climbers who go out and do stuff that's not the case for half of these people. This is a different like van culture though. Yeah, That's what we saw different. was not like the glam Instagram van culture. We saw like the like like a subculture, a counterculture, whatever you want it to be of people living in vans and I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I grew up I grew up like wanting to be a wanderer my whole life and so like these people are living pretty grubby. So I'd want to elevate my game a little bit like I said. But, like, I don't know. All right, so that's part one of our episode, which apparently we've decided because of how good Nomadland was, we've decided to turn this into a Nomadland slash Batman versus Superman (laughs) podcast. And that's it. Um, Thanks for tuning in and listening to this. If you uh, enjoyed the podcast, check us out on uh, Instagram. We're on YouTube. You can find us on Anchor, pretty much anywhere your, your podcasts are found. If you want to listen to the Batman v Superman episode that we did, check that out over there. Um, and we hope to see you guys next time.